Listen, and today is Wednesday, which means it's time for a new track from Scratch Stream, and that's what I'm doing today. Today, I'm going to continue the uh, sort of funky 110 thing that I was working on. The sort of the twist for today is that, in the meantime, FL12 officially released. And so now I'm using FL12 officially. I would like to point out that um, when you're installing FL12, uh, the way that I, I did it is that in my FL11 install, which is in, you know, program files, x86, image line... Where it says FL12, I literally just renamed the thing FL12, and then when I installed FL12, I let it run into the default directory, which is right here. And so it installed over everything about FL11, but all of my projects and all of my samples are still right where they're supposed to be. And everything worked. I opened up this, I opened up this project, and it did its job. I didn't have to worry about anything being weird, in case you wanted to know that you could do that when you're installing FL12. Um, yeah. Oh man! So one thing that I I actually checked to see if I could right before doing this because this this is um I think this is the normal. There's a lot of mixer options now, so this is kind of like what I'm used to doing in terms of mixer size in FL11. In fact, this right here would be more or less what the FL11 mixer looks like. This is the way that I'm used to using it. Um, did they get rid of the sends? Where's the sends? There's no way I saved that. Uh, is it because I did that? Yeah, okay. So the sends are there. I'm not going to use the sends. I'm actually going to get rid of the sends. And in doing so, I'm going to show off a whole bunch of cool things about that uh, for while I'm doing so. Because um, I never use the sends, ever. And this is because you can make anything you want a send. You can just do that yourself. You don't need, you don't need to actually have sends to do that. Um, some, people, some people like the workflow, which I guess why they included them, but I personally do not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of... I'm going to unlink the sends on the channels that I'm already using... Because, and, and then after that, I'm going to bulk get rid of the sends on every other channel remaining. I'll show you how to do that in a second, because it's awesome. Is this doing something? Yeah, okay. And actually, just for giggles, I'm also going to name this guy the drum bus, because that's what it is. That will come, that'll become important in a second. Derms. So here's the bulk. So here's the thing. If I hold down Control and Shift, I can select multiple mixer inserts. I could control them all uh, like that. Not only that, not only that, but here's actually a thing. If I were to, if I were to select a whole bunch of these, it'll move them. It'll offset them. It'll move them together as opposed to uh, doing it like that kind of thing. But what I'm doing here specifically is uh, and then I'm going to just select this and say route this track only, and it unroutes it from every single one of them, and then routes it into the master, except for this guy here, which I don't remember what. This is? Is this doing something? I want them all, I want them all to be what it's supposed to be. That was kind of weird. Oh. Um, this isn't doing... Oh, wait. This is doing something. What is this? That's the sub. All right. I should probably name this. Sub. I don't want you in the mixer inserts either. And then that. The fuck was that? It wasn't my phone. Uh, I probably still drilling stuff outside. Do do do. I'm gonna get rid of this. This. Now, if I were smart, well, actually, I couldn't have done this because I was—I didn't make this project with FL12 initially. But if I, in the beginning of the project, I would do this and maybe even save a template with this having having been done. What I'm doing ultimately. Uh, so pretty much everything after this. Control shift. We route this track only. Bam. And so now none of them are routed to the to the sends ever. And now that they're not routed to the sends, watch this. I can undock the sends from where they are. And now what's what's up with this docking business, you might ask? Well, we have docks. So watch this. Dock to left. Dock to left. Dock to left. So now I have my drums sub inside next to the master at all times. No matter where I am in the rest of the mixer, they're there. And that'll give, uh, that's going to give us that. Hey, Dion Timmer's in the chat. What's up, Dion Timmer? Mr. Timmer? Mr. Dion? Okay, I felt 12. It's a good time. So yeah, you could actually, you could dock anything to either the middle, the left, or the right in the mixer. 
and it's, it's really good for like you know organizational purposes. And here's 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 my favorite part about the mixer: not just the fact, not just the fact that you can, uh, you know, scale it however you want. You can even make it full screen. Bam! If you wanted to do that, it's so really great for multiple multiple monitor usage usages. We have a whole bunch of different size options. You have compact, compact two, wide, wide two, wide three, and my personal favorite, extra large. And the reason why this is my personal favorite is because it's so big that you can actually see the effects rack inside each individual channel without looking at this. In fact, I can get rid of that. Bam. And then I can do this. And notice how, like, as I get bigger, more slots kind of appear. Well, I guess right now. Yeah, there you go. See, some of them went away and there's more of them. There are obviously more slots than, you know, that. I think I can scroll if I use too many of them. Let me, let me check. Uh... Put something stupid on it, like uh, uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, see, if I add more effects, it adds more lines, so it, you can use a total of the ten mixer slots that there are. Replace none. So yeah, this is um, this is my personal favorite view in terms of using using that because now I don't I don't need to have the effects rack. I can you right click right click on these things and you get the normal effects choice and you can even uh you have to you have to kind of do the whole if you want to move it up or down you gotta like go do this to do that because you can't scroll on it. Maybe you can alt scroll or shift scroll. Shift scroll does that, which is whatever. Also know how whenever I, I hold down anything it actually like shows it shows what I'm doing. How cool is that? What is this? Wow. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, that's that. You can also open and close the docs. There's nothing on the right side, so there's, there's just whatever. You can also show to have like particular extra parameters. You can tell it to do that view, which is fun to look at, but it's not it's not the kind of information I want. So like I don't tend to use that a lot. For those wondering about the hard style track, I, I'm going to do the hard style track when I'm done with this track. So the next track from scratch, like track, not the next stream, is when I'm going to actually do that. So, yeah, that was just a quick, I just, some quick, um, I'm going to save this project. I need to read, what? I can't just, did I hit Alt S or something? Control S. Yeah, weird, okay. Um... What was I going to say? So, yeah, that was a quick little bit of housekeeping to format this track for FL12. Oh, another awesome thing about FL12 was actually how the patcher works now. So, um, here's, my, here's my patcher. You might notice that there's no editor's window, which, I mean, you might not have never know that it was there. Because what it normally is, you click on a thing and it brings you to the editor window. But, uh, it's all fully detached now. In fact, it's fully detached. They're actually completely detached windows that can go into other, win other um, monitors if you want. But now I don't have to worry about trying to find them in a list of stuff. They just go, they're just there. And that's awesome. So that's nice. Okay, so the last thing that I want, uh, the last thing, the thing that I want to do for this job, I want to kind of rearrange it a little bit because I'm not actually super happy with this arrangement. I'm going to get rid of this. I like, I like the little explosion they make when you when you get rid of, uh, when you get rid of things. <laughs> Wee. Wee. <laughs> that's just, that is, I love that. Um, all right, so first thing, like, I didn't want to go down. I went down. So this, this is this is the pattern versus song switcher. Why is this muted? Oh, yeah, because I have the side chaining thing doing, doing the stuff. And the freely balance. <laughs> Sounds dumb. What was the original progression? So it was that, but it just sounds weird in this context. Yeah, 
I guess I could do that. That kind of works. That little arrow is that circle thing that we have we used before. I gotta make that work. What's this? Right. We'll leave that alone for a second. This is the sub. I'm gonna have to change this. I'm going down to D, right? I'm going down to D sharp. And that's right, because this isn't going down anymore. Wise, that's what I want, but these sounds are still kind of dumb. I actually wanted to change this guy a little bit. Actually, wasn't what I wanted to do, but I think that's how it kind of cool. That kind of works, I guess. Let's see what that sounds like in context. It doesn't have that, it doesn't have the, the, the motion in it anymore. Ugh. So the square part. See the custom shape, please. See, 
I keep trying to go back to the the thing so I can pick on the pick on the uh, patcher, but this is a, a, a detached window now, and they behave a bit differently than you might expect. <laughs> I got weird. Uh, yeah, there is this sound. Which was just a Reese. A Reesey Reese. A Reesey Reese that Reese's Reesers. might have actually helped. So I don't actually want this to happen like twice in a row, so I'm going to um, find a new, a new sound to put in there. Actually, this will be a good opportunity to try something new. Um, NFL 12. Uh, NFL 12. Uh... Mm hmm. I'm a, um, there's a, it's not a new plugin. It's basically the same plugin. There's so many ways to add stuff now. Um, how oh, they changed the list. These are all the, the basic things. There's a lot, there's a lot about the data, the, the plugin database I'm not super familiar with yet that is actually better. Once I figure it out, it'll be nice, but I haven't yet. But anyway, uh, there's a plugin. Uh, but in here, of course, I have to use the plugin bigger. Um, where is it? That's the fruity formula controller now. Uh, and the P controller also is, is different looking. And there's also the visualizer, which I don't even know anything about how to use. Um, I'm looking for, I think this is the guy I'm looking for. The envelope controller. The envelope controller is exactly the same as the regular envelope controller that was in FL, FL11, except now it has an XY graph. And the difference between is you might be thinking, well, why, why, do I, why do I need that? Because I can just automate stuff normally. Well, there's eight individual articulators, but there's still only just one XY graph. So this means that if I'm in if I'm in the X modulation mapping for one particular parameter, for example, I could this is just regular XY mapping that I can do on this now. I can also link a second a second articulator that can actually do something completely different, and then they'll both do that. This is essentially what a macro is, um, in in various other stuff. What the hell is happening in the chat right now? I don't understand. That's okay, but um, just uh, anyway. The um, benefit of this is that, especially for this track, where my goal is eventually that I want to try and play it with my bass, is that I need to have a sound that I can control with a single controller input with my foot. And while you could do this in FL11, you were stuck to using the um, you were stuck to using the uh, controller linking mapping formula stuff, and there are a couple of presets, and there's a lot of there's a lot of um, uh, you can like manually make some stuff, but it's super it was super hard to control, and you absolutely could not do stuff like this business, where now you can, 
And now you can link it to anything, anything that can be linked to a controller. And the benefit of this is that um, now I can make, just, I can have asymmetrical controller linking on some things. People talking about how fast I talk. I understand that I talk fast, but here's something you need to understand is that this is me talking slow. This is me trying hard to talk slow. Just so you know. So this is gonna be fun. Although, do I need? To, do I want to have this? It needs. It kind of. It needs to be triggered with it, but the control. Because and because then what I'll do is that I'll up here, I have a knob. This will be my knob, and then I'll link this control to the knob, and then I'll output controller, the various articulators, and then they'll control the various parameters of whatever I end up wanting to control. So I could, for example. Uh, where's default? Oops. Also, notice that all my presets are still here because when I when I uh, installed FL12 all over my old FL FL11 directory, it copied everything over. Well, I didn't copy everything over; I just didn't get rid of everything. Am I a rapper? I would fail amazingly at rapping. My, I talk fast, but I'm not like precise talking fast, which is the whole problem because I I start going when I start talking too fast. So that's that's what I would sound like. That's what that would sound like. So what the hell's I about to do? Oh yeah. Um. So I can actually do a whole bunch of internal like stuff in here. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the Nicodemus track is pretty fucking funny. Y'all who saw that link in the chat, I I think you should listen to it because it's hilarious. Uh, yeah, and then what if I did that? That's a bit weird. Uh, so do I want to go less or more? I guess I want to go less in the low end, like so. So it gets it gets smoother but harsher. I'm gonna. Oh, that's that's some shit right there. Uh, I have to get used to that whole architecture now. Oh, something's getting weird. See, I'm used to just going. Hey, yeah, but there's not a list now because they really, really want you to get used to using uh, either this or the plugin database because it's over here. You know, same deal. I can just be like. Uh, this is effects. Where's where's EQ in here? Is that in the, this visual? No, dynamics. No, filter probably. Yeah, here it is. And like, there's the way that the, the plugin database is set up right now. But you can also make your own like favorites folder, and you can arrange it. And you you have a lot of control over how it works. I just haven't figured out how yet. Also, check out the new visual visualization inside the um, EQ. It looks weird. So now, here's the kind of stuff that I can do with the macro now. I can do stuff like activate this guy. Activate this guy. I could say, let's see. Uh, this can just be okay. So the articulator, articulator one can be for the distortion. Articulator two can be for. Oops. Um, is this side editing? 
Yeah, okay. Step editing. This can be for the EQ. So now I can set very ridiculous and specific ranges for things. Outputs, controllers, articulator one. Outputs, controllers, articulator two. Articulator one. Bam. Articulator two. There you go. Although, actually, articulator one, I want it to do kind of like this. Hold on. Uh, hold on. There's a thing I need to put out here. Uh, where's the continuous output? There it is. That's for all of them, right? Yeah. It's doing it! It's doing it! Alright, so now, um, back in Citrus, uh, act activate this, so then this gets controlled by that knob. Now this knob controls everything on the surface. I appear to have done it backwards, though. Because this guy... Why does it think I looked at... Oh, because it's triggering it. I'm a dumbass. Come on. I know there's a way to do this. I linked it to the base? Why the hell? Oh, my God. I didn't activate... That's. I'm a smart person. That's what, that's, what, that's what that was. That's all that was. I can, go, I can go backwards. That could be cool. <laughs> Whoa. You think I have the EQ in high precision mode? I really don't. High precision mode doesn't appear to do anything right now. I should have put a new one of these in here. Order, steep eight, order, steep eight. So this is number four. And that's this guy, it's position, activate. So then I need articulator three to come out. And control U. So two is doing that, so that means I want three to do that. Wanna see what I'm doing? Probably not. <laughs> so I went, I went a little too hard on that. Can I not see both at once? That's really weird. I guess I knew that I was doing that because I didn't actually said not to do that. There we go. So now it's not doing that. And now it's also not. There we go. So it's staying apart a bit because I, I don't want to get that close. That's a pretty simple application of the entire process, but that should give you an idea of what it does. So that's like really harsh. Let's try and do something a little bit <laughs> not as ridiculous. I just wanted to demonstrate what that was like and potentially make a cool sound, but I appear not to have succeeded. Let's keep that up the whole time. Or I could always make it a square.
That wasn't helpful. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. So now let's control some more weird things. Let's do... Let's do a flanger. I can't do that anymore. Uh, where am I flanger at? Oh. <laughs> um... Yeah, although, numerous times, well, good job, good job, FL. This is just not going to work now. Ah, great. How about the chorus? Do you work? Nope. Whatever, Flang Flangus is basically, that's weird that you did that. It's basically the same process. So now, uh, oh, I guess now that I'm using this guy, it's not going to screw up as much. <laughs> None of his parameters can be automated. Damn. I mean, you can you can automate it, but it's not the same. I'm talking about this whole this whole chorus problem and the phaser. There's the peak controller. It's kind of cool now. Well, all right. If I can't do it like that, then what is that? That's a free send. They updated the free to send even. Jeez. Uh, I could I guess vocode it. That actually might be kind of cool. Vocode it before the distortion. Let's do it after the distortion. Okay, I want to come in here to band distribution near that. There we go. That's pretty evil sounding, but let's take let's do the square thing again. That's fun. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's do some let's do some fun things with. Uh, Macros. Alright, so I'll put controllers four and five. Four, I guess, could be bandwidth, and five can be pitch. So bandwidth. Stick kind of high, but it can go low. Let's go low on the low, low, low one like that. And then five. Pitch, you can kind of go everywhere. <laughs> Let's see what that does. That's kind of awesome. Let's do a little bit lower in the bandwidth, though. That's gross sounding. Let's see what that sounds like with the square or salt type, rather. That's some shit. I don't know if that would fit. That sounds really neat, but I don't know if that would fit with what I'm doing in this song. Really gotta stop trying to do the the plug and picker thing. Oh, 
That might be cool. I do like the band pass everything. You might be thinking, oh no, I'm running out of articulators. What if I wanted to use more? I could just get another envelope controller. <laughs> Six. I'll keep it relatively in the middle there. Yeah, I definitely want to keep with the square. Or what if I did the opposite? I got a bit weird, that's what happened. Yeah, band pass might not be the best plan. Although, actually, I wonder. <laughs> this really shouldn't work, but um, I guess there's no reason why it wouldn't. No, if you're in a menu like this and you right click, it won't close the menu. But if you do click, it'll close the menu. So if you don't want if you want to do multiple things at once, then you can just do that. So it's normally the stuff that I do manual automation for. But I'm interested to see if I can make an automatic process out of this out of a single controller. A la a macro. So now the whole point of this is that they're kind of traveling contrary to each other. But not like evenly so to speak there may even be a little bit of a little bit of that but that might be a bit much and with a lot of like a lot of quick control this is usually why it's, it's independent automation but again i'm trying to <laughs> that is quite interesting that's it that's not what i wanted to do at all Again, I, gotta, I forget that I can't do that anymore. Uh, Maximus. Let's make you bigger. There we go. Uh, let's be smart and pass through some base. or behavior is not entirely so it's pretty low let's not make it that low let's make it a little higher and this guy could be higher as well this is the band pass. Hope that hasn't been too loud for you guys. 
All right. I've managed to successfully make a sound, and I have no idea how this is going to sound in context. Uh, well, this is the end of part one. Part two, we'll find out if it works in context. <laughs> I'm going to wait a second, and then part two is going to happen. Hi.